Greetings, this is another video overview by the Flashlight Reviewer Self-Built. Today I'm looking at the new Explorer series from Nightcore. Uh, there are four models here, the EC1, EA1, EC2, and EA2, uh, that take the various uh, battery types as you might expect. Uh, I'll spend most of the time talking about the EC1, uh, just kind of give you the overview of the build and how the light works. The interface and general options of the light are pretty much the same. There's some slight variation in output levels depending on the battery sources. And you can kind of see that on the boxes in front of you, uh, what the max output is. Basically, the EA1, which is meant to take a single AA battery, has lower output uh, than the other lights of this class. Um, the lights are typically all take a full range of batteries. Uh, in some cases, multiple uh, or lithium ion are not necessarily recommended, although they're generally supported. And I'll go through that sort of fairly briefly in a moment as I run sort of through each one quickly. What's very distinctive about this build, you can see looking at the light, is the head area. And there are two electronic switches here, which allow you to control all the functions of the light. There's also a secondary red LED, which I'll explain in a moment, and a primary cool white XPG R5 output bin. So you can see that one right there. Um, all four of the lights have exactly the same head, uh, visually that is, like from the exterior appearance, and they all look about the same. You can see the reflector is very smooth. Uh, although there is a very slight bit, I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. Let's see if we get that a little bit closer. Let's see if we can get that to focus for you. Uh, but right around the emitter, you can see there are some very fine concentric rings uh, at the base of the emitter. These are probably to help a bit with smoothing out the beam. Uh, the beam is actually fairly good despite the small size. And as you can imagine, with a very deep, it's about an inch deep reflector there, uh, you'll get very good throw with a small emitter like an XPG uh, R5. Uh, overall build is fairly solid. The lights have a reasonable weight. There's a little more weight to the head than you might expect compared, let's say, to a traditional light. Uh, probably due to the extra heat sinking and circuitry inside. Um, there is knurling on the body. It's not overly aggressive, but it's not bad. So you have a fairly good grip uh, there. Uh, there are ridges in the head here to help with heat sinking, presumably. And of course, the flat area with the button. So the overall grip is quite good. You can see there's a clip here that's removable. There are two uh, hex screws that hold that clip in place. Um, I like these kind of bi-directional clips because you can put them on uh, bezel up or bezel down. So you can imagine, for example, you could slide the brim of a cap underneath there so the light always points forward. Or you could hang it you know, with something going in this area, let's say on a belt, so the bezel is down. So nice to have that option. Uh, the clip is fairly good. Could be a bit sturdier, maybe. Uh, it's not quite as sturdy as my, um, let's say, EB1 backup light from, uh, or E1B backup light from uh, Surefire, but it's that kind of style. Used to see these in some of the old jet beam lights as well. So all in all, a good package. If I open it up, and we'll put a battery in. Um, first point here, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but there are square cut screw threads. Uh, there aren't that many, there's only about two here, in some cases down to just about one on the EC1. The other models all have a, a longer area with a few more screw threads, but in any case, even this one's very secure. You can see there's a very simple tail cap, uh, with the contact disc and the spring in the center. There's no clicky switch, of course, it's just a flat tail cap. There's a slightly raised, I don't know how you can see that, uh, column at the head of the circuit board. Um, so you should be able to use flatter top cells you know, pretty well, uh, although it's obviously meant for you know, standard type cells. If we put a primary CR123A in, you notice again the uh, threads are anodized for lockout. And tighten the light. First thing that you notice that happens is there's a uh, beacon flash. About once uh, every two seconds, that little red light flashes, which is a sort of a located beacon. This is actually kind of a nice feature for an Explorer series. It means you can always find the light uh, in the dark. If you don't like seeing that, of course, just turn the tail cap a quarter turn. It locks out the light and there'll no longer be any kind of beacon mode. So it's there by default. As soon as you tighten the, t the tail cap, on will come the beacon mode. Now the user interface for the light is very straightforward. There's two buttons. They're labeled. Let's see if I can get you to see that. I have to focus a bit. So they're labeled on off at the bottom and mode at the top. So basic operation, you just press the on off button and the light comes on. Now there are four, actually five output modes you access in sequence. So you just now press on the top mode button and the light will cycle. So there's the uh, lowest mode, they call that micro, low, medium, high. And then back again to low. So low, medium, high, sorry, that again. Micro, low, medium, high. There's also, I'll go back to micro for a second, a turbo mode, which you get by pressing and holding the mode button for more than one second. Here the light jumps to a turbo mode. Press the switch again, and you go back to the regular four modes. 
So it's there. It's not that much brighter than high. Uh, you'll see numbers in my review uh, on different battery sources. Uh, but it's nice to have the extra option if you want an extra little burst uh, of power. And then on off again, turns the light off. So that's basic operation, very straightforward. Uh, there's plenty of other options though available to you for the light. So one I'll show you right now. If while the light is off, if you press and hold the on off switch, you enter into a strobe sequence. And you can hit mode and turn that light uh, back off. And we have it again, we'll just put it back on. So for that I just put it into lockout mode. So something else you're seeing right now is a flash uh, readout uh, of the battery. And I'll just press and hold that again. Okay. So, we're back on. Uh, so what you saw there, with the light is on, uh, and you press and hold the off switch, it puts it into uh, a lockout mode, which is what I'm showing you right now. I accidentally triggered this a moment ago. So what it does is it reads out the battery voltage and it locks out the light. So turn the light back on, you have to press and hold the switch, and the light comes back on. So that's, that's what happens if you press and hold the on-off switch while the light is on. It enters into a lockout mode. It draws a lower uh, amount of current, so the battery will last a lot longer. Although the current draw isn't all that bad to start with, and again, you'll see numbers for all of this uh, in my detailed review. So just to show you the strobe mode again, from off, press and hold the switch, and the light goes into your strobe mode. Press again, turn it off. Press and hold the mode switch, and release quickly, I should say, and you'll get the constant red output light. So I'll just do that again for you. You just press and release the mode switch, you get a constant red outlet output light, which is actually fairly bright. Uh, you'll see again detailed numbers in my review estimating lumens for everything with the light. If you press and hold the mode switch, though, now you go into this sort of SOS mode. So, you know, it's an interesting interface. The light responds differently whether or not you do a single press, like a click, or press and hold. So you have a number of options there uh, in the light. So a surprisingly sophisticated interface for, uh, you know, the number of, uh, of options that you have. Um, Fairly intuitive too when you get used to uh, working with it. You'll keep track of what the various modes do. I like that the uh, the strobe and SOS are hidden. The regular modes are very easy to access, and it's nice that this continually flashing um, beacon mode can be turned into a solid red mode. This will also flash at an accelerated rate as the battery drains, so it can be used as a battery indicator. And as you saw when you lock out the light, uh, meaning that it won't be easily activated and it goes into a lower current uh, draw, it'll read out battery voltage, which is a nice feature as well. I should probably show you that again. Um, do, just do that again from on so we can count the voltage. So that was two. Nine. So it just read out 2.9 volts which is the current voltage of this uh, primary CR123 in there, uh, battery in there. So what it, the way that it did that was it'll flash the main voltage in a couple of flashes as it pauses, and then it'll flash everything past the decimal point. So that's why you saw 2 followed by 9, that's 2.9 volts on the battery. Press a hold again to undo the lockout, and we're back to regular output. And that's basically it. A uh, very straightforward uh, sort of interface for the light. Um, if I go through the build of the other models, the, the main difference is we get into, like, for example, the E1A, you'll see the battery tube gets a bit thinner, and that's because it's only meant to be taking AA batteries. It will, this one will take 18, uh, sorry, 14,500, uh, although the brightness levels increase when you do that. Um, it does maintain all four brightness, all five brightness levels, but their relative amounts are higher, and you'll see detailed numbers in that uh, in my review. Also, just to sort of show you the tail cap, as I mentioned before, you can probably see there, there are quite a few, there was at least an extra full thread uh, on the tail cap on the, uh, on the longer light. Uh, overall diameter again is narrower, but the build is very much the same. Um, actually, I'll show you the 2AA first, because it's basically the same thing. It's just longer, so it looks very much the same as the EA1. EA2 is just a longer battery tube, and overall dimensions are similar. Uh, what's a little bit different is the EC2. This has a thicker body. It's even thicker than the EC1 was. You can see the overall diameter. And the reason for that is that it'll accommodate an 18650. So you can see this is a very compact little light to hold an 18650. Uh, the threads, again, are, as you can see, quite extensive. There's a good number of screw threads you know, there as well. Tail caps are a little bit larger, I think, than the other ones. Um, overall build, again, is still comparable. Just, you know, again, some adjustment to allow you to take a protected 18650, which is a nice feature of this model. Quite a compact light. Um, you'll see uh, detailed uh, numbers for runtime, output, and beam shots in my review. Maybe just very quickly, just to show, show you what the beam looks like. If we turn this back on, 
and maybe we turn it back onto a nice high turbo level. And we'll see if I can do this with too many reflections here on my desk. Um, yeah, that doesn't really show you how it looks in real life. In real life, that is a relatively small hotspot. It's being diffused a bit here on the surface of my desk. It's actually quite a throwy little light. Um, it's one of the throwier lights, I would say, that I have of this class. So I actually, I have lights of bigger heads that don't throw as well as this. That tiny reflector inside that deep, uh, the tiny emitter inside that deep reflector gives you very good throw and for this class of light. And you'll see numbers about that in my detailed review at Candle Power Forums, where you'll find me in the uh, reviews form under the username SelfBuilt, or my personal website at flashlightreviews.ca. So I hope you found that overview of the series helpful. Uh, you can find more details on those sites. Thanks a lot.